Hi, welcome to TBN Con. This is the introduction to TBM. It's a Python slash TBM Street interface. With me, Jocelyn, and I'm from OctoML. A good question to ask while starting off is the question, what is TBM? TBM is a machine learning compiler. And what that means is if you have a model and you want it to run on a specific hardware target, TVM can make that happen for you. For example, say you had a 3D unit and you wanted it to run on an NVIDIA GPU. TVM can make that happen. Or another example, say you have a model for a self-driving car and you want that to run on a Jetson Nano. TVM can make that happen for you. The next question is, how does it happen? How does the process happen from taking a model and then having it run on a specific target? This process can be broken down into a couple of simple steps. First being, load a model. Say for example, you have a PyTorch model and you want it to run on TVM, you'll need to load it. And that converts it from the PyTorch format into the TVM's high level graph representation language called Relay. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we jump into the coding section. The next step is tune, which is optional. This is a part that uses machine learning for your machine learning, which is pretty helpful if you want your model to run pretty fast in the end. The next step is compile. This takes your high level model and converts it into a language that the hardware can understand. And as a result, you'll be able to run your model on that desired hardware. Now that we've done a brief overview of these simple steps, let's jump into the code so that we can take a deeper look at how these steps are run and used in the actual Python API. All right, now we are in our VS Code environment and ready to get looking at the TVMC API in Python. If you haven't had TVM installed and ready to go yet, you can take a look at the docs. It should be the very first doc. And then feel free to follow along here, or if you have, don't have that ready yet, follow along and refer back later. First step is to have our imports ready to go so that we can actually use the API. Don't forget to do that. And let's follow along with the steps that correlate to the PowerPoint from earlier. We're gonna load. This is taking a model from an external framework. So here we have an Onyx WebSamp 50. I just got that ready earlier um, by using wget and copying the link online. And this load function converts this from Onyx to TVM's internal high level representation of a model called Relay. So we're gonna take a look at that so you guys have a sense of what I'm talking about. This is just a way to unify all the different frameworks within TBM so that it can have a concrete way to represent every model. So here we have Relay, what it looks like, just a way to represent a model. So we have our convolutions, our values, our Patch nodes and whatnot. This is a giant chunk of all the uh, parameters. Quite intimidating, I would say, a giant wall of text. But that's just the format relay is. Alrighty, so we're taking a look at relay. Another thing that is worthwhile for you to understand is that load also has an additional parameter that you can put called shape diff. And this is the very first input into the model. Let's take a look at the model. A really good way to visualize a model is this open source project called Netron. I'm gonna switch screens to it. So you guys can take a look. So we have Netron and I'm going to drag the WebSamp 50 into here. Woohoo, so we have our red snap. I'm gonna click the first node and here's the shape. You can see the shape is really complex. We're gonna copy this array and put 
the input should be shared. If there is more than one input as the first thing, just copy the loop and dictionary with them as well. And I'll show the other ones later. So I'm gonna take this back. And we're gonna populate this. So this shape dictionary is useful if you want to fiddle around with back sizes. Unfortunately for PyTorch, it's necessary. Other front end frameworks, it's not. Uh, reason being is that PyTorch, unfortunately, the way the model is designed and its formatting doesn't allow for QVM to automatically search for the input. But worth noting that you can also use it for back size. Alrighty, so that's load. Um, the next step is this tune step. We're gonna circle back to it because it takes a bit of time, like a couple hours to actually to do the tune process. And we, it'd be more helpful to also understand um, what it changes. So we're gonna do a benchmark before then and then a benchmark after to get a sense. So our next step for now is compile. Again, as I mentioned from the slide earlier, this is taking the high level relay that we just converted the model the parameter here and converting it into a language that the hardware that we're targeting can understand. So it's LLVM because we're targeting the CPU on the computer that I'm using right now. And this compilation result should return a package of a bunch of CUDA code. So making the model and converting it into a language the hardware can understand. Now that this would be converted, we want to actually run it and see the results. So letting, again, taking this compiled, converted uh, model to the lower level hardware language and letting QVM know the device, returning the result. And since we want to see the results, we're going to print it in our, our terminal here. This process takes about a minute or two and the fans do they do rev, rev and spin quite a bit, so be prepared for that. There are also some error messages that pop up with QVM from time to time that don't actually affect the functionality of what's going on, so no stress there. <laughs> All so we have the results. Whoosh. I'm going to copy and paste these results, the times into this text file so that once we do the tuning process, we can just look at it more easily. There we have tuning. So the tuning process is how TVM, it's the machine learning for the machine learning component of TVM. So TVM is able to automatically search for the best kernels for your model, that being optimized functions for heavy compute load. So basically, this is optimizing your model and making it faster. Um, because this process uses machine learning, it doesn't matter which model you have or which hardware you have, um, TVM should be able to search for the way to make it faster, um, regardless of the pairing. So that's the great part about TVM, it's very flexible. All right, so we're going to make sure this process, so the tuning records is the way it's saved. This log is going to be saved in uh, our directory once it's done. So appear here and oops. And um, once it's tuned, we have to make sure that uh, compile actually knows <laughs> the tuning records so that it's actually used. So don't forget that parameter, otherwise you'll, you'll be tuning a lot and not actually like compiling <laughs> with those optimized kernels. So let's get started. It's going to take, in general, I think roughly four to six hours. Um, it depends on the model, but we can get the process kick started and again, I will Fast forward <laughs> to the end result. 
worth noting here, this generic tune, it doesn't have additional parameters here. And this is auto TBM. It's like the first generation of TBM, which as first generally first generations are, they're not quite as good as latter generations that have more speed ups and more functionality. Um, the next generation is auto scheduler. I'm running just auto TBM, the first generation for now for simplicity's sake, but there the documentation on how to add additional parameters to your TBMC Python script if you want to in a doc that should be up by the time you're watching this video. You should be able to look in the docs. There's a little search bar and just search for TBMC Python. And you should find all the information you'd like to see about this, um, including if you want to make an RPC server to run a Jetson and other tricks here and there. If you want to save things and save time later and whatnot. So this is what auto TBM looks like. It has this sort of bracket task one out of some integer number and it'll just keep searching. So see you in a little bit. Let's go back. All right, we're back. The auto TBM tuning has completed. The process ended up being a lot faster than I anticipated. It was closer to two and a half hours as opposed to the four to six I had mentioned earlier. So it's good to keep in mind that depending on the model, it really does change how long the tuning process takes. All right, after tuning, we did the compilation and then we ran it. And here are the printed results after tuning. We can take a look and compare that to the results we had without tuning. And yeah, 64 compared to 106, that's definitely worth noting and significant. All right, we'll jump back into some slides to finish up the talk, but I hope this process has been helpful for you. See you there. All right, this is the last slide to end. The talk will conclude after this. This is the thank you slide. A huge thank you to Leandro Nunes. He's the one who spearheaded the TVMC command line. The TVMC command line and the TVMC Python API actually share the exact same backend. They, they work very, very, very similarly. Um, so thank you to the community at large who's helped build out TVMC and make it so robust as well. Thanks to Josh Fromm for building out the TVMC Python API. He was really the one who did all the design work and figured out how it would work within the TVMC command line pre-existing code base and wrote the majority of the code for uh, the Python API. And also thank you to him for helping me with this talk. Thank you to the TVM Conf crew for making the, conf the conference happen at large. A lot of work went into this. And last but not least, thank you for listening to this talk. I hope it was informative and I hope it was helpful. I've left my email here if you ever think there's a point at which you think I could be helpful to you. So feel free to reach out if that ever becomes the case. Okay, thank you. Happy rest of TVM call. All right, thanks Jocelyn for the great talk on uh, the Python API for TVMC. Um, we have a few questions that people have posted in the Q&A. Um, Tomer asks a really interesting question. What happens if the tuner crashes during tuning? Can you do a checkpoint during the tuning, tuning process? Yeah, so tuning actually you can do over and over and over if you wanted to. Um, that's why there's that output file, the log. So you can tune once. If you want a faster result, you can try it again. Not guaranteed that will end up being faster, but you can just repeat it. So if it crashes, just start the process again and it should be all right. And worst case, delete the log file and then get a fresh start. Yeah, good. Thank you. Um, 
Netta also asks a really good question. How does TVM tune input shapes with dynamic dimensions and sizes? I think we may be able, may not be able to quite answer on the how part, but we did want to talk about um, a little bit about in general about dynamic shape support in TVM, right? Yeah, so for now, to my understanding, I don't believe we actually support dynamic dimension sizes, though there is active engineering effort to support it. So not yet, but hopefully very soon. Right. A lot of questions um, in the chat or in the Q&A that is about how the auto tuner is working. Um, I think it, I think we can address several different questions here. One from uh, Ram or Ram, another from Tomer, a couple from Tomer uh, here that basically are just all kind of asking the same thing. Like, how does the auto tuner work? What is it looking for? How does it optimize? Um, I know we do have a good, really good tutorial on, um, on the TVM site about optimizing uh, gem for CPU, which does talk about how to parallelize across multiple threads, which is a specific question uh, that was asked here. So I'll link that tutorial in the chat. Jocelyn, is there anything else you'd like to say about like what the what the tuner is doing in general uh, behind the scenes of this Python API? Yeah, so I think it's probably the one of the key ideas of this tutorial is that the tuning process is what makes your model run faster ultimately. So in the back, while all those numbers are churning and you wait a couple hours, machine learning is chugging and running to try to optimize your whatever machine learning functions are going to, to make those kernels run faster. So it's ultimately running machine learning so that you can get a faster runtime result. That's the, I think that's the key point of TVM. We want things to run fast and the machine learning takes, that, takes care of that for you. Yeah, okay. Um, I think we covered a lot of the questions uh, uh, that are on the Q&A already. Um, Tomer has one last one that just got dropped. Let me look and see. Um, oh, no, actually, I think we asked, uh, the one that I was thinking about was specifically about uh, paralyzing across nodes, which again, I'm, I'm going to link that tutorial Tomer in the chat. So look for that there. Um, all right, one, uh, one uh, late breaking question from Netta. Jocelyn, maybe you could take a crack at this one as well. Does the tuner optimize for power instead of latency? So as of right now, TVMC is not designed for anything other than latency, the runtime speed, um, but not saying that can't happen in the future. All right, just giving a little bit more room for um, questions to come up. All right. Oh, one coming in from Martin. Tuning does not affect accuracy at all, correct? Yeah, it, it doesn't. That would be really sad if we made it faster it and broke the thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, as of, sorry, I just read Tomer's question and then immediately started responding. Um, is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. I think, uh, yeah, that's no problem. Uh, Tomer's question regarding uh, plans for multi-objective um, optimization. So as of right now, to my knowledge, we don't, but there is a strong open source community. And I think if a lot of people said that this was a very relevant to them and interested in them, that there would definitely be a response from the community. So if that's a big, a big thing for you, please reach out on the discuss forums and whatnot and speak up and things can happen. All right, Roland asks a question. Uh, can you also launch optimization strategies like quantization at the same time? So, I don't know that answer. Yeah, Do you, Jocelyn? I no, I don't. Um, I know quantization, there's a lot of development on that going on, so it is, definitely part of TVM, but I don't, so I guess that, I guess that does answer the question. Yes, quantization is part of TVM um, and is being currently built out. But in terms of things that the auto tuner is searching for, I don't 
believe that that's one of them, I, but I'm not, I could be mistaken whether we're tuning, whether tuning uh, quantization is a tuning parameter. Quantization support is, is um, something we're definitely working on, the community is working on, but whether we're tuning for that in the, in the search space, I'm not sure, but I, I don't think so. I think that may be a parameter of the model, but that's something I, that's just my first um, inclination and not. Uh, yeah. Not the Python API that I just demonstrated doesn't directly use quantization. So that framework in itself, not right now, but quantization is supported in TVM itself. So not the Python TVM C API, but it exists in TVM. All right, with that, we are out of time. I see more questions coming in. Sorry for that, we didn't get to all of them. We can try to take those offline as well. Um, we do need to take a break. Next talk will be, um, at 11 o'clock, um, we're gonna have a discussion on Tensor IR. So see you all back here at 11 Pacific. Thanks, Jocelyn.